monetary policy is certainly not helping support growth given the unprecedented tightening cycle that we've had across the globe, that's for sure. Um, but yeah, I, I do think we spend uh, too much time talking about monetary policy and not talking enough about fiscal policy. In the US, arguably, the Fed's job would be much easier if we had fiscal policy that was a bit more restrained. Mm. Um, and in Europe, I think we, um, we should be talking a lot more about fiscal policy because we risk going back into the old equilibrium where we face fiscal policy that is structurally too tight, forcing monetary policy to potentially overcompensate. So that whole balance between the two, I think, needs to be a much broader part of the conversation than it has been so far. So if the fiscal policy in the States is to some extent eroding kind of Jay Powell's effect and, and Co's effect, does that same thing apply in Europe as well when you have these different governments doing different things in terms of their budgets? No. First of all, I think it's a different order of magnitude. Secondly, um, in Europe, I think we need to look a little bit further ahead. And we know that we've just agreed new fiscal rules, which won't really start biting until 2026. But if I was the ECB, I'd be quite nervous that by 2026, I'll be stuck again in the same equilibrium that I was stuck in between qualitatively, not quantitatively, but qualitatively, between 2017 and 2019. You know, where we called it Europe 1.1, or our economists called it Europe 1.1, 1% growth, 1% inflation, 1% interest rates. Mm. That's not an unlikely oh, risk scenario for Europe. So what breaks that, Ralph? Because, I mean, you could just, yeah, governments could spend more, but do they fear a Liz Truss moment? Or what is it that, that stops these things from happening? Um, I think in Europe it's the, the institutional setup where we've convinced ourselves that these fiscal rules are necessary in a monetary policy union, but the rules that we live in were designed in the early 90s. They're not really appropriate for the time. And more importantly... All the challenges that we face are challenges that require significant uh, public outlays, whether or not that's public infrastructure to achieve uh, energy independence, to manage the green transition, mm. to increase defence spending. The fiscal rules that we agreed in December force European governments into deciding whether or not to buy tanks or pay pensions. Right. Those are the stakes. So, so, we, so we don't necessarily have the f fiscal room for manoeuvre that, that you would like to see. In the meantime, we do have monetary policy, back to Kriti's point, and we'll, we'll maybe go there in our thinking. Uh, so where do you think we get cuts first? I know Guy wants to pick up on this theme as well, but where do you think we get cuts first between the big central banks? Because the market does, it seems to be, at least at the margin, increasingly thinking that we get more sooner from the Bank of England. That's what's reflected in, in swaps. But what are you thinking? Uh, we wouldn't agree with that. Um, and uh, we've been consistently making the argument that the inflation problem in the UK is more entrenched and, and more stubborn than elsewhere. Uh, we're not going to see that for some time because of the energy price cap effects that are currently bearing down hard on, on headline inflation. But we have, uh, from a calendar perspective, the ECB going first, just because their meeting yep. is before the Fed's meeting in June. So both Fed and ECB in June and Bank of England not till August.